And so we meet again. So glad you could join me. So um, last time we introduced the basic notion of testing hypotheses. Um, and today what I'd like to do is work out a couple of uh, simple examples to just get a feeling for what this what this is like. So, um, all right, so examples of hypothesis testing. So um, what we're going to do in particular is um, going to be a few variations on the same problem, very simple problem. The question is, you're given a coin and you want to check whether you believe it's fair or not. Okay, so there are going to be two hypotheses, um, the null hypothesis and the um, alternative hypothesis. So in this case, the null hypothesis is going to be that the coin is fair. And the um, alternative, um, well, what does it mean that the coin is unfair exactly? So we'll have a few different interpretations, but let's just first say um, maybe the probability of getting a heads is more than a half. Something more than a half. Okay? This is a pretty, um, pretty vague um, hypothesis, really. It includes a lot of different possibilities, that it's slightly more than a half, that it's 90% um, getting heads, etc. Okay. Um, now we uh, conduct our test. What is our test going to consist of? Um, let's just uh, keep it simple to begin with. We're going to flip twice. If we get two heads, we'll conclude that we think the coin is biased. So um, head head, then we'll assume a hypothesis zero biased. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, if we get two heads, then we'll uh, we'll think that it's an unfair coin. We'll assume that the chance is more than fifty percent. So sorry about that. We'll conclude H one that it's a biased coin. Um, anything else? We'll conclude that the coin is fair. Okay. So, um, you know, it's up to us. We can make whatever test we want. It doesn't have to be a good test. It's, um, but let's just analyze this test and see um, what its qualities are. So, for example, we can ask, what's the probability of a type 1 error? So, recall a type 1 error is um, when the null hypothesis is true, but we reject it anyways. Okay. So um, if the null hypothesis is true, that means that the coin is fair. Um, and um, if we, the coin is fair, but we end up rejecting it, that means the coin was fair, but we flipped a head head, and therefore we thought that it was biased. Um, the probability of that is one out of four, right? Okay, um, probability of a type two error. A type two error is when we, um, when we, um, when the alternative hypothesis is true, but we don't notice. The coin is biased, but for whatever reason, um, we think that it isn't biased. Okay, so um, this is when the alternative hypothesis is true, but we pick um, H0. Okay, so um, now, yeah, so what is this probability? Now, in fact, we really can't calculate this probability because we don't, you know, the, the alternative hypothesis um, means that, um, you know, the probability of getting a heads could be anything above 50%, all the way up to 100%. If it's 100%, then there's zero chance of getting a type 2 error. But if it's close to 50%, there's a big chance. So we can't actually calculate this, but we can at least um, give it some sort of a bound. So let's say, for example, like if um, the probability of a heads was something like, let's just say a half plus epsilon, like just a little bit better, the epsilon is some very small number, just a little bit better than a half, then what would be the probability of a type two error? Um, probability of type two, well, this would be getting anything but a head-head, which would be pretty close to three-quarters, because there's only, 
if the if the probability of heads is pretty close to a half, the prob uh, the probability of getting two is about a quarter, and so this would be about three quarters. So in fact, there's potentially a very large three quarter possibility of getting a type two error, depending on what the actual value of the probability is. Um, and of course, if epsilon is you know a lot bigger, if it's closer to one, then this error is going to get smaller. So what do we know? We know that the probability of a type two error um, is something less than uh, three quarters. Okay, so let's let's think about this. This is a pretty a pretty bad test, but it does have um, some interesting features. So um, one fourth, it's pretty big, but you know it's not like um, it's not like very it's not the most likely thing in the world. There is um, there's only a one and a quarter chance of us accusing the person of like using an unfair coin when the coin was actually fair. So we're protecting ourselves a little bit um, against the um, against making an unfair accusation, so to speak. Right. On the other hand, um, the type two error being close to three quarters, um, or at least up to about three quarters, means that there's a pretty good chance that we will fail to detect a coin even when it is unfair by our reckoning here. So. Um, so that is, you know, so this number right here, if you recall, is this number alpha, which we call the significance level of the test. Um, and this number down here is this thing beta, and one minus beta is the power of the test. So this is a test which is not very powerful, but has a low, a low-ish alpha. It's pretty not, not very low actually, but um, you know, it's, um, you know, it has a a, you know, you know, a, a low-ish uh, level of uh, you know significance. So it's a little, little bit good on the significant side, a little bit pretty horrible on the on the powerful side. But in fact, it's just all really. It is a horrible test, right? Let's let's just let's just call a spade a spade. Okay, how could we make this test better? Um, I mean, really, we um, we need to flip the coin a lot more times, right? So. Um, you know, and we don't want to. So, for example, we don't want to be um, unfairly accusing um, the, these people of um, uh, of having an unfair coin when it's not, right? Okay. Now, um, of course, there's one aspect of this test that is um, particularly awkward, and that is um, that these two conditions, the coin being fair and the and the probability of heads being greater than a half, can be almost indistinguishable from almost indistinguishable from each other, right? Probability of heads being more than a half includes a half plus epsilon. So if we're going to make a better test, we're going to we should probably um, shift a little bit. And let's say that instead of trying to determine um, whether or not the coin is just fair or not, let's have some new hypotheses. So let's say either um, the uh, you know hypothesis zero is going to be that the coin is fair, and hypothesis one is going to be um, that the coin is biased in such a way that the probability of a heads is at least ninety percent. Okay, now you might kind of object and say that these are not mutually I mean, these are not, um, these, these don't encompass all the possibilities, right? I mean, what if the probability of a heads is 60%? So in the, in the context of this, I mean, you know, we're not trying to be perfect here. We're trying to at least not be too wrong or be too wrong in a way that's going to hurt us basically. So, the idea is that we are going to conclude, we've decided we're going to conclude one of these two things is true, and we're just going to now calculate, like, what are the possibilities of making mistakes in various ways. Okay, so, um, so in this context, we're going to, let's use the same test. So, um, so the test is flipped twice. Um, if we get um, head head, then we conclude um, that the coin is biased, and otherwise we conclude that it's fair. Okay, so um, 
So again, let's see. Um, the probability of a type 1 error um, is going to be um, a quarter. So there's still a 1 out of 4 chance that we get a heads heads even though it's a fair coin and we call the coin unfair even though it's not. The probability of a type 2 error though um, is now um, a lot less because now this is the probability um, that we've gotten let's say a tail tail or a tail head or a head tail given that the let's call it theta the probability of a head is at least 90 percent so we can um, calculate calculate that this uh, binomial random variable and just as before you see it's um, less than um, well um, I can either get a tail tail which is um, a 0.1 squared um, chance I can get a, a tail head which is a 0.1.9 um, I can get a head tail which is a 0.9.1 and so this is point, um, 0 0.09, 0 0.09, 0 0.18 plus 0 0.01 gives me 0 0.19, 19% chance. Okay, so in this context um, there is a no more than 19% chance that we um, that we fail to detect a bias coin uh, but bias now means that the bias is at least 90 percent so if we're trying to figure out if the coin is very biased now we're uh, we're a little better off but now as as i mentioned before um this number is um is really a bit alarming this one fourth because we really don't want to um believe that we have an unfair coin um when the coin is actually fair right so um so this we would like to get down we would like for example let's just say we would like the probability of making a type one error to be let's say less than like one percent let's just say right because you know as i say it's it's kind of a more it's a more powerful accusation to say that the coin is unfair okay so um all right so you know if you imagine what are we going to look for we're going to um you know want like um a string of heads if it gets too big to tell us that the coin is unfair let's do a similar test how big does that string of heads have to be um we need two to the seventh sorry two to the end to be at least a hundred so it'll be seven and we'll um so that we get um so we'll flip seven times flip seven times and in that case you can see that the probability of getting i'll call that seven heads is um one out of 128 and our test will will be now if we get seven heads then we conclude that the coin is biased and otherwise we conclude that it's fair okay so um okay so let's see how how this test does in this case the probability of a type 1 error of concluding that the coin is unfair even though it's not um is as we said going to be 1 over 128 which is less than one percent it's pretty good so we are so it's only in an extraordinary circumstance getting seven heads in a row that we say the coin is unfair so if the coin was fair it's very unlikely that we're that we're going to make that accusation um on the other hand what's the probability of a type 2 error so a type 2 error is where we fail to detect an un, uh, a biased coin now re remember hypothesis one i should have uh, reminded us so hypothesis zero is that it's fair and hypothesis one is that the probability of a heads is at least 90 percent so we're only looking for extremely biased coins right um you know i mean otherwise looking for a string of seven heads would be a pretty uh, big hurdle to pass it's still a pretty big hurdle though we'll see right because the probability of a type 2 error so what is this um well you know the were um so any result other than getting all heads um is really one minus the probability of getting all heads and if the probability of heads is um at 
at least 90%, this is going to be less than or equal to 1 minus 0.9 um, to the 7, um, which, if you work it out, <coughs> um, is about 1 minus um, 0.48, so about 52%. Okay, so what does that um, tell us? That says that about half the time, the coin might be biased, even very biased, you know, 90% heads or so, and we would fail to detect it with this test. Um, so this test is relatively safe, but it doesn't, um, but it's not very powerful. It fails to kind of detect the, um, this kind of actionable um, um, consequence, even if it's, um, you know, even when it's true. Okay. So, um, so of course, just to remind us, so the, um, so the significance level, which is the probability of a type one error here is this alpha one over 128 and the, um, and the power of this uh, test is uh, one minus uh, beta, which is, um, you know, point uh, so beta being this um, beta being this 52%, the type one error is 0.48. Not very powerful. Okay. Um, so you want beta to be close to one to have a powerful test. Small chance of a type two error. So again, like um, how could we um, how could we improve this test? You know, um, we might try to um, to make the test more powerful like we might say like okay like even if it's an unfair coin it's not super likely to get a string of um of seven um of seven heads in a row because it's, it might be unfair but it's not that unfair um, 0.9 is is not quite that unfair to to be to expect to see that so we might ask instead like maybe we can um kind of soften our criteria a little bit like what if we say um you know um what if we say instead We'll say, um, we'll accept um, hypothesis one, we'll believe the coin is biased if um, we get um, no more than one tail. So we can get all, so we'll accept that it's a biased coin if we get all heads, but also if we get all but one head. And we'll do H naught otherwise. So again, we can uh, calculate these um, probabilities. So um, the probability of a type one error, this is the probability of, um, of getting only one or zero tail, assuming that the coin is actually fair. So this is gonna be, well, I could get, um, this is just the binomial random variable, which we're working on, we could, we're either getting, um, you know, seven heads, or we're getting, let's say, um, um, six heads and one tail, but then that tail could fall in any of the seven positions. So you got seven of those. And so you see that you have eight times a half to the seventh. Um, of course, eight is two to the third. So you get um, a half to the, uh, to the fourth, um, which is one sixteenth. Okay. So, um, 1 16th, so that's about um, 6%. Okay, on the other hand, uh, the probability of a type 2 error. So, this is the probability that, um, well, okay, so again, we're only going to be able to bound this because we don't actually know um, what, the, what the coin is like. But, you know, worst case scenario is... Um, you have a 0.9, so this is under the, you know, we're, we're here in the, um, in hypothesis uh, one territory, assuming hypothesis one is true, but what, what's the probability that we don't see it? Um, so this is the probability that we get, um, that we don't get all heads or that we don't get all but one heads. So it's, so it's one minus the probability that we do get those things. So the one minus the probability that we do get all heads minus the probability that we get, um, so let's say all but one head and the other one um, 
a, a tail, but then there's eight possible slots that that goes into, and you do that. Okay, and if you work that out, um, what, what I got was um, one minus point, uh, about nine. So this is about, um, about um, 10%. Okay, so here, this test is much more powerful. The, um, the beta is, um, is 0.9, uh, one minus uh, 10. Uh, the alpha is 0.06. Um, last time, the alpha was, um, 0 .0, well, was less than 0 0.01. Um, so this test is significantly, um, is significantly more powerful, but it is uh, less significant. So that is to say, you know, if we're concluding the coin is biased, we are less sure of our kind of strong conclusion. Um, on the other hand, we are able to successfully uh, detect a biased coin much more frequently when it, when it's actually there. Um, you know, there's a you know um, there's only a 10% chance that we're going to miss detecting that unfair coin when it's there. So um, of course it's natural to ask like um, what which of these tests should we actually do? Um, and of course there's um, there's not a simple answer to that, right? Um, it really depends, I mean, on what one is trying to do. Like, um, you might imagine, like, what if instead of testing, checking to see if a coin is biased, we're checking to see if a medication has a side effect, right? So we have to then ask ourselves, what are we going to kind of prioritize when we're designing our test? Um, do we want to make sure that we... Um, that we don't say it's safe when it's not? Um, or is it better to say like, it might not be safe, uh, or, you know, you know, we'll, and, um, or it might be safe, we just don't have enough evidence uh, yet. Like, um, are, we, are we more interested in kind of failing to reach a conclusion? Um, you know, is that, is that more dangerous, is failing to reach a conclusion more dangerous than reaching the wrong conclusion? That's, that's really the question. So, um, you know, I mean, in, in general, like, you know, in math and science, we hate to be wrong, right? And so we, we tend to try to get that alpha pretty low. We decide on a low value for alpha, um, our level of, significant, our, of significance, and then we do what we can to make the test as powerful as we can within that constraint. Um, and um, yeah, so there we go.